Alexander City, 150 years in the making, from its Native American heritage evolving into the diverse city it is today. Creek Indian villages once occupied the creeks and riverbanks of the area we now commonly call Alex City. The early 1800s saw pioneers and traders move in, eventually resulting in skirmishes and battles until the final encounter at the Battle of Horseshoe Bend in March of 1814. General Andrew Jackson and his troops forcefully attacked, breaking the power of the Creek Nation, and the government took possession of the land. Tallapoosa County was established in 1832, and one of the early settlers was James Young, who purchased 320 acres of land that included what is now the town square. Young's son Griffin became the first postmaster, and thus named the town Youngsville. Nearby gold mines like Hog Mountain brought prospectors and mining companies into the area in the late 1800s. The difficulty of extracting gold from the hard quartz, the California gold rush, and eventually a lack of supplies and manpower brought on by World War I essentially stifled the mining industry. Revival broke out in 1872, launching the town's first organized congregations, the Baptist Church and the Methodist Church. In 1874, the railroad arrived, opening up new opportunities for commerce, shipping, and travel. Before the tracks for the Savannah and Memphis Railroad were laid through the middle of town, the decision was made to rename Youngsville to Alexander City in honor of Railroad President Edward Porter Alexander. Over the next few years, the first schoolhouse was constructed and commerce began to flourish. The Hertzfeld brothers operated the Alexander City Bank and a general merchandise store. After partnering with the Hertzfelds for a time, Isaac Frozen bought out the Brothers General Merchandise Store, and Frozen's department store was founded in 1891. Cohen's Fair Store, Radney Furniture, Busby's Feed and Seed, and others followed. The town got its first newspaper in 1884, when teacher and lawyer Adolphus Longshore created the Beacon. Ownership of the paper changed hands a number of times before the Beacon was purchased in 1892 by Captain J.D. Dixon. He changed the name to The Outlook, and it continues to provide residents with local news coverage. On Friday, the 13th of June, 1902, around 1 p.m., a small fire broke out behind Robinson's machine shop. On an ordinary day, it might have been quickly extinguished, but it was not an ordinary day. It was windy, hot, and extremely dry. Quickly, the flames escalated out of control, and with no waterwork system in place yet, the fire moved through Alabama, Broad, Green, Adams, and Jefferson Streets, destroying everything in its path. In just a few hours, the town was gone. The machine shop, Fuller's store, the Adams Hotel, Alexander City Bank, Citizens Bank, the post office, the courthouse, the train depot, and the livery stables. The first Presbyterian church at the corner of South Main and Tallapoosa Streets was the only building in the business district to survive. The townspeople immediately shifted into recovery mode. Makeshift offices and arrangements were made for the bank, post office, railroad, newspaper, and city government. Towns throughout the state provided relief in various forms, and by the end of the year, the entire town had been rebuilt. By then, cotton was a prominent crop in Alabama, and cotton mills a thriving business. The railroad provided the perfect transportation for bringing in supplies and shipping out finished goods. The Alexander City Cotton Mill, opened in 1898, was purchased by Avondale Mills in 1919 and became world famous for producing mattress ticking. In 1902, 26-year-old Ben Russell purchased a small knitting mill and relocated it to Alexander City. With six knitting machines and 10 sewing machines, the Russell Garment Factory began producing ladies' and children's underwear. In 1908, the mill added spinning to its operations, and in the early 1930s, it began manufacturing woven cloth and athletic apparel. By 1952, the company employed 5,000 workers. Both Avondale and Russell developed mill villages with housing, churches, and schools for their employees' families. The mill's success was huge in the city's growth, but Russell didn't stop there. Along with his mill endeavors, he opened a foundry, hotel, dairy, bakery, laundry, wholesale grocery, the first national bank that later became Alliant Bank, and a telephone company he later sold to Southern Bell. In 1926, Alabama Power Company completed construction of a dam on the Tallapoosa River. 
Named after Alabama Power President Thomas Martin, the dam created a 40,000-acre lake. The electricity produced by the dam and recreational opportunities provided by the lake added another growth aspect to the area that continues strong today. Over the next several decades, Alex City continued to flourish. There were good jobs, a bustling downtown, movie theaters, sporting events, and the lake. Local celebrities began to emerge. Perhaps the most famous was Louise Day and her daily doing show on WRFS Radio. Life was good in Alex City. However, the turn of another century ushered in unwanted changes and challenges for the city. Many difficult decisions had to be made. But devoted citizens continue to cast new visions for the next 150 years of Alexander City, Alabama.